where it became clear that we couldn't really have a conversation about technology without immediately breaking down these very artificial barriers between you know, design, illustration, set design, production design, costume, uh, visual effects, cinematography, etc. You know, it's it, it's we're involved in a process more and more that's becoming a single uh, workspace. And um, somebody just asked me about specialization versus generalization. It strikes me uh, now, and this is uh, um, skipping around, but I'm working at DreamWorks again now. Uh, DreamWorks is a company that's built itself on the basis of specialization um, in a sort of pipeline <coughs> kind of factory mode. Um, and it's very clear to me working there now that that has to change radically, that it actually is a, is a real advantage to designers if they are generalists, if they're capable of working with 3D tools, in work, go jump from Maya to Photoshop, um, and, and really be able to understand that we're in a shifting sands right now, we're in this very, very you know, dramatically changing um, environment, and the designer is becoming central to that. So 5D represents the, the sort of five, perhaps, uh, tent poles of, of narrative media um, in design. So what we're identifying is uh, film, animation, um, TV, interactive media, which of course involves you know, the whole game environment, and architecture, which um, includes immersive uh, experience design and kind of media-based architecture. I think architecture's kind of split down the middle now as to how much it's devo devoted to media and how much it's devoted to kind of bricks and mortar. Um, but given that much, much broader uh, scope of, of a sort of enormous industry, if you, if you combine all of those, um, what is clear is the designer is central uh, in each of those media. Um, and the designer is probably the only person who can freely pass um, between, you know, film, animation, and architecture. Let's say an animation producer would have a hard time finding a job in in architecture. Um, a cinematographer would have a hard time finding a job in in, um, in architecture, or even in animation, actually. Um, so the designer is kind of reaching a, a whole new position of strength in his and her central position in in all of these media. Just to lay out this process, there's a, you know, it's kind of a, a, a myth, but there's, a, there's this popular notion that the film starts with a script. Um, we generally experience that not to be the case, but um, let's say the script gets packaged with a director and a producer, and then the first hire would generally be the production designer, who would start hiring a crew, um, researcher, location manager, the concept artist and illustrators, the storyboard artist. And this is, this is sort of the beginning of a conventional production process that's gone back for a hundred years. But then once you start um, adding digital tools to this mix, it starts changing fairly dramatically. Um, because we plug previous now, or design visualization into the front end of um, the process directly connected to the director and storyboards in that part of the process, and to the set designer and to the visual effects supervisor. So now we have storyboards feeding um, blocking information. We have the set design and the concept artist feeding environmental information. Um, the visual effects supervisor is starting to work with the production designer to separate um, what is going to be virtual and what's going to be and the camera, who can start earlier but uh, tends to start a little bit later, um, is plugged into that too. So now you have um, a nonlinear workflow, this completely fluid space, which is inputting information and sending out information constantly as it's updated. You know, as we get information from previous back to set design and back into the concept art, uh, we're updating the 3D models and then we're exporting JPEGs out of. Maya to the illustrators. The illustrators are now drawing on top of lens accurate um, um, views from within the environment. And then that information is going back into previous to make color decisions and lighting decisions with the camera. 
um, and the director continues to work on the blocking. So we have essentially a simulcrum of full production going on in early pre-production. The end result of this, um, in my opinion, uh, actually changes the nature of the film process dramatically. And I think this is migrating this thought process into the other narrative media fields. Um, because there's really no kind of beginning, middle, and end anymore. There's no pre-production, production, and post-production. We start in full production at the beginning, and all the information is uh, accrued and added to uh, in an intuitive way through the full arc of production, using the same tool sets and just adding more and more data and information to the tool set so that by the end you have a complete film. But you know, in, in, the, in the case of um, animation, where it's a fully CG environment from beginning to end, Essentially, you're just building on that skeleton of a, you know, a Maya model combined with lighting um, concept uh, all the way through to that CG final um, film. And, um, and so, it, in order for this to make sense, and because it, it makes logical sense almost just because of the geography and the timing of where the art department is placed in the process, for this process to be centered in the art department with the designer. Um, it changes the, design, the designer's relationship to the production, to the producers, uh, significantly. And, and those producers who have kind of come on board now with this are beginning to change the way they look at the way they budget films, the way they plan films, because they can make far more considered decisions in the early, early, early stages. Um, so in the end, we end up with this digital production space.